we'll use Newton's method to estimate a root of cosine x where the initial guess for x is 2. Newton's method equations are as follows. xi plus 1 equals xi plus f xi over f prime of xi. And this is the usual equation for percent relative error. Uh, this is approximate error because you're taking two successive estimates of the root. Now, so Newton's equation here, the xi signifies the uh, current guess, the xi plus 1, the next guess, and the f of xi over f prime of xi is the correction term. For the theory, you can check the textbook or other online references. All right, so let's begin. Uh, first of all, we know that we're going to be using NumPy and we'll be in using uh, Matplotlib for plotting, so I did already type in the first three statements. All right. Now, next, uh, I'm going to define the function that I'm going to be using. And the reason I do that is that if I want to use a different function to find the root, then you can easily change right here and you don't have to change anywhere else in the code. So I'm going to say def. This will be the function that I use throughout the code. It has one input, which is x. Oops, sorry. It's a colon, and then I have to return cos x. I don't need the parentheses, sorry, just return cos x. All right, so in this case, my function is cosine. Now I also want the derivative of the function, so I define that as well. And of course, if I try a different function, I'll have to change its derivative as well. We call that f prime and one argument, and then here we have uh, return. And the derivative of cosine, of course, is minus sine. All right, so uh, we will need the initial guess for the root uh, because we need to start somewhere. So we'll, I don't intend to end, so that's x0 equals 2. And the actual root for comparison purposes, call that actual equals pi over 2. Of course, in practice, you don't know the actual, but here we're trying to evaluate performance. All right, now we want to take a maximum number of iterations. And let's try max, take on my max iterations as 20. Okay. All right, now something that can happen, if you notice up here, you're dividing. And it's possible for the denominator to get too big and cause problems. If the numerator and denominator are both small, you could have some issues. And this uh, calculation may not be accurate. So let's go ahead and put in minimum divisor value. Maybe e minus 20. In practice, you might have some reasons for setting your minimum divisor for some value. Right now, I just want to illustrate the concept. Right now, we want to set a tolerance level uh, for the significant digits. So if the approximate relative error in percent is less than the tolerance, then we want to break. So I'll call this tolerance is equal to, uh, let's just say, uh, 1, uh, well, usually we'll do 5, e minus 8. So you can figure out how many significant digits that is. This is approximate relative error in percent. So you know that if you had a tolerance of a one, a tolerance of 5, that would be one significant digit. So e to the minus 8, that's multiplying by e to the minus 9. So you can figure out how many significant digits that's, that is. So I think that's probably going to be something like uh, 10 significant digits, but you can figure it out. All right, so uh, let's put arrays to store the data. And uh, we want to store the approximate error, the actual error, the approximate relative error, and the actual relative error. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're doing that because in this case, we want to chart the performance of our algorithm and make some graphs to show the convergence rates, see how well the algorithm's doing. Okay. So I want, as I said, I want the approximate error. I'm just going to copy this statement because I'm going to copy it four times. All right. And I want the approximate error, and the, they're all going to initialize to zeros. And then I want the actual error. And then I want the approximate relative error, and then I want the actual relative error. Okay. 
and I copied because I want to set them all equal to zeros. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and calculate. So first, I want first I want to set my initial x as the first value in the iteration. So the initial value was x x zero. Now remember in this equation, I update x i based on the values of the function at x i. So I'm going to have x i and x i plus one in each iteration. So why don't I name my code, name the variables in my code similarly to the variables in the equation. So I'm going to say x i equals x zero. So that's my initial x i. And then I'm going to iterate. So I'll do four. And I'm going to iterate until I reach max it, but actually I probably won't reach max it. I mean, the point is to choose max it large enough so that I don't ever reach it and I reach my tolerance limit before I reach max it. So I'm going to do 4i uh, in range of max it. And that will mean I will loop max it times. Okay. All right, so let's compute the actual and relative errors. So the actual error, now I actually, I have an actual and relative error even on the initial guess. I don't have approximate relative error and approximate errors, but I do have actual error and actual relative error. So here we have actual error of i is equal to, the actual error is going to be the actual value minus the approximation. And my current approximation is this xi. Okay, so I'll take absolute value of actual minus xi. And the approximate actual relative error is going to be similar. So uh, let's do this. Actual rel error of i is simply, simply going to be the absolute value of the actual error. of i divided by the actual value and then times 100 because I'm doing it in percent. Okay. All right. All right, now we're going to deal with the small dividing problem. Uh, now, the denominator is the derivative of f. And I'm also going to evaluate the derivative of f in the formula. So I'm just going to go ahead and set a variable equal to the derivative of f. That way I don't evaluate f multiple times. Let's say f prime. And my function name for the derivative is fn prime. Let's just verify that up here. Right. The name of my function that gives me the derivative is fn prime. So I can go ahead and cite that function. And I want to evaluate that at my current guess, which is xi. Now, the thing is, if uh, f prime is too small, then I want to terminate. So absolute value of f prime. And the cri convergent criterion was this min divisor thing. And in this case, if, if uh, the denominator is too small, let me just print something to indicate that it actually worked. It actually went out, so you could say that the derivative is too small. And usually that will happen if there's multiplicity at the root. And you can read the theory about that. So we'll just break here. All right, now I need to update the root estimate. And that for that, I'm going to use my Newton's method equation. Newton's method update using the current estimate plus function value divided by the derivative. So this is just going to be, uh, that, and that gives me, let me go back there, it gives me xi plus 1. So I need a name for this new variable. I might as well call it xi plus 1. Okay. And that's going to be xi minus, I have to take F, uh, fn, and that's going to be xi divided by, now I've already evaluated the derivative f prime. Okay. 
Now at this point, I have xi and I have xi plus 1. Those are two consecutive estimates of the root. I can use those to estimate the uh, approximate error and the approximate relative error. So let's do that. All right, now the approximate error and approximate relative error are the approximate and relative errors associated with this xi plus 1 estimate. So I have to associate that with the index i plus 1. So I have approx error. And that's just going to be the difference between my two successive estimates. xi plus 1 and xi. And the approximate relative error of i plus 1 is just going to be the approximate error okay, uh, divided by xi plus 1. All right, so I have my approximate errors. Now, these are what I'm going to use to determine my convergence criterion. Now, I could use approximate error, but I'm going to use approximate relative error. That's a choice that the coder will have to make depending on the situation. So, if the approximate relative error and my current approximate relative error estimate is i plus 1, and if that's smaller than the tolerance, then I can break. Then I update my estimate because I'm done with my new estimate and I'm going to iterate because I, so I need to set my xi plus 1 as my new current best estimate. The revised estimate of this iteration becomes the established, the, the established or benchmark estimate for the next iteration. So that completes my calculation then we're ready to start the presentation. All right. So uh, first we print the root. I already have that in there. And uh, then we'll create the figure for approximate and actual relative error. I shall call that figure one. And then the uh, let's plot the relative error. Now the thing is that the relative error began the, the approximate relative error began at iteration 1. So uh, we'll have to start at iteration 1 when we plot the relative, the approximate relative error. So I'm going to plot, and my x values will be iteration number. So I'm going to start with 1 and go to i plus 1 because I'm actually going from iteration 1 to iteration i. Uh, uh, and i now is actually the last value that ended when we, ex when we exited this loop. Right? When i exits the loop, that's going to be the number of iterations. And I want to include the last iteration, so I put i plus 1. You remember that Python does not include the last index. I want to make sure to include that i index in my plot, because that's my very best, uh, my very best approximation. Okay, so here I want to plot max. Uh, I'm sorry, approx, and I'm also going to do that in the same range. Now call it label. Okay, this is going to be approximate error, okay, and this approximate relative error. And then I'm also going to, I'm just going to copy this statement because the other one's going to be very similar. And we'll just see what we have to change. Whoops, sorry. That was not what I wanted to do. Let's copy paste it here. Now, in this case, I'm actually going to have actual errors from zero. So I'm going to start here. Okay. And my, uh, instead of approximate relative error, this is the actual relative error. 
And here again, I'm starting from zero, so I don't need the one here. I could put zero or just put nothing. And then this is the actual relative error. All right. Now let's go ahead and uh, change the y scale to logarithmic because, as we've seen before, the log of errors is usually behaves much more nicely than the errors themselves. When you have multiplicative errors, they tend to scale logarithmically. So my y scale on this plot will be logarithmic. And I'm going to add label to the x and the y. And then And then we, let me add a legend and title. So uh, I could just do legend. Well, sorry, legend. And here I'll put it in location three. Forget where that is. We'll find out. Okay. And then uh, so we'll do approximate and actual uh, rel uh, relative errors or news. And then finally, I need to show my plot. And let's see if it actually works. All right, let's see. So here we go. What's the problem here? Well, I had colon cancer again. So we don't have, we forgot the colon. Uh, you can always see that when it says invalid syntax and at the end of the for statement, there's nothing there. So forgot the, we forgot it. Now where's the, where's the for statement? Here we go. Let's try again. Thinking, thinking, because it's actually loading NumPy. This is my first time I ran it. So I'm going to pause for a second. Let's get the result. Oh, it's already came. All right, so let's see what it looks like. Now nothing flooded. So let's see what we have here. It says root at 2, two with tolerance 20 minus 10. So something is definitely wrong. It didn't go through any iterations at all. So let's see what the problem is. Now, the fact that it didn't go through any iterations at all makes me want to look at the places where the where the loop terminates. All right, now, first of all, I can see that I is in range of max hit. And my max hit is set at 20. So it should have gone through this. So let's look at where the ter terminates. Now, I know that it didn't terminate here because I didn't get this printout. So the only place it could have terminated is here. So, and it terminates based on approximate relative error. There's certainly something, nothing wrong with this. Let's see, there must be something wrong with approximate relative error. Now, uh, let's see what the, so here's my statement for approximate relative error. Now there's something wrong here because the approximate relative error should be based on the approximate error for the same iteration. This is I plus one, this is I. So there's something wrong here. Let me put this as plus one. This should be the same iteration. All right. So let's see if that fixes it. And it does. So there you have it, your nice cookbook graph for Newton's method. And now you're ready to do other exercises and applications with Newton's method. All right, bye-bye.